Hi, I decided to end this year with a couple of tips for Commodore BASIC 2.0 or simply Commodore 64 BASIC and maybe you already know some of this stuff, maybe you don't, but I came across these situations more than once and especially when I develop a game in BASIC. And I do believe that these are very useful tips that can save you some time during your development. So yeah, let's start with the situation number one. Ok, let's say that we have something like this. So our variable A here represents number of points that user collected during the game. And for purpose of this demonstration, I just increment this variable A by 1. And then we print number of points that user collected on the screen. And on line 40, we are jumping back to line number 20. So our main game loop is here between line number 20 and 40. And then um, let's run it. As expected, we just print number of uh, points that user collected. And in every cycle, um, variable A get incremented by 1. OK, let's say that we want to trigger some action every 5 points that user collects. So how to do that? Well, if we would do something like this, I will add uh, line number 25 and we will have if statement. And if I say that when variable A equals 5, then we will have some action. For purpose of this demonstration, I will just print nice play. Um, okay, this is a problem because this, this if statement is going to trigger only once and never again. And we cannot do even this, what we usually do um, in some kind of counters and stuff like that, that we um, assign this variable a back to zero so that we can uh, start all over again, uh, because this variable a is number of points, we cannot restore it back to zero, so this is not option. And if I run this program, as you can see, this if statement triggers only once and never again. So this is clearly not the solution. The other solution would be if we add additional counter. Um, and then we count every time that number of points of this variable A, which represents number of points, get incremented. Then we have our additional variable that represents counter. Then we increment that. And then in that, in that case, we can um, uh, track um, that counter. And when this counter reaches number five, then we can restore it back to zero. And our main variable A will be um, saved. We don't touch that. But that gets really complicated, especially when how <laughs> the game uh, grows and we have m m uh, many other additional variables. Uh, there is a very elegant solution for this. So let me rewrite this line number 25. And again, we have if statement, but this time I'm going to divide variable A by 5 and compare it with the integer of that same thing. OK, and this condition will only be true if this division is without a remainder. So that means in kind of sense, kind of modulo, which we actually don't have um, in Commodore Basic. So this statement is only be true when the number uh, variable A divided by 5 is without a remainder. So, then we're going to print nice play again. Okay, let's list this program now and let's run it. As you can see, uh, the number of points are still incremented. We didn't change that at all. And every five points we have um, our action triggered. And in this case, we have nice play printed on the screen. So. This is very elegant and quick solution for this kind of triggers. 
And every time when there is discussion about what commands are missing in Commodore Basic 2.0, there is always focus on um, uh, graphics commands, sound commands, and several other uh, type of commands. But what I believe that we truly miss here is those kind of operators like modulo, uh, exclusive or, and better if statements. Uh, at least it would be our life would be much more easier with that. Yeah, but nevertheless, this is how it is. So let me show you how you actually can do calculate modulo to see actual remainder of a division. Okay, modulo. So there is a formula how it can be performed modulo between two numbers and it goes um, a minus integer of a divided by b and multiplied by b. So this is how it looks. So let's write a little program for demonstration. Let's say for i equals 1 to 20 to let's see variable b is going to be i minus integer of i divided by 2 and multiplied by 2 and this is equal to i modulo 2 okay and i will say run here okay and then 3 we are going to print variable a and variable b and then 4 is next okay let's run it <coughs> as you can see a modulo is working perfectly and we have a remainder of uh, division by 2 which is actually great also if we want to change um, the number that we are dividing by there is no problem with that so now we have um, different remainders and it works pre pretty well so yeah so that's module so the next thing that i want to show you is this frequency of events and this is related to many things in inside the game like uh, frequency of appearing of different kind of enemies uh, frequency of um, creating some assets in the game uh, in form of gifts or credits or coins or whatever it is uh, during the game and um, you still want to have certain randomness to it just you don't want that to be tied to exact number uh, but still you want that to be under your control to have certain uh, frequency to it so let me show you a couple of ways how I do this so let's say that we want to create some event um, that will happen roughly one of the ten time one of the ten cycles so let's say that we, we and we will use um, random uh, function to achieve this uh, and like I said this is, will not be exact there will be certain randomness around it so let's create our variable a to be to be uh, integer of random function multiplied by 10 let's close the brackets so what we have here uh, we are generating um, integers from um, 0 to 9 okay and we will compare it to let's say number 1 and then in case that this is true this whole uh, thing will become negative 1 and we only need to multiply it by minus 1 and what we are expecting uh, is whenever this random function generates a 1 uh, this whole thing will variable a will become 1 in every other case from um, 0 to 9 uh, this whole thing will be 0 so variable a will be 0 
so okay let's print variable a on the screen and then we are going to jump on line two again so if we run this um, little program this is what we have so roughly one of ten times we generate a positive number one everything else is zero and we can actually calculate how many um, how accurate this is and I wrote a little program for this occasion so this is the same thing same program uh, we are generating variable a and the only thing that we are doing here uh, first we have um, variable t and f uh, t represents positive um, or uh, when uh, variable a is one um, or true and false is when variable a is zero so we are going to count uh, how many times our variable a is actually one and how many times is zero and uh, additionally we are going to reset uh, random functions just to be sure that we are actually uh, starting all from the beginning uh, without any uh, repetition uh, and we are going to generate 100 of these numbers and we are going to simply print the results on the screen so if I run this program and wait a little bit as you can see we have 7% that the variable a was 1 and 93% the variable a was 0 so let's do this again so roughly around 10% so like I said we um, have certain frequency of events but we do have some random randomness uh, in this and um, this can be very useful to implement inside your game uh, of course we can change these odds so we can instead of generating random numbers from one to nine uh, from zero to nine sorry uh, we can go from uh, zero to let's say five okay so in this case this is going to be uh, one of the five frequency so let's try to run that as you can see now we have 22 percent uh, when variable a is uh, equal to one and 78 percent when variable a is equal to zero so that's one way how to do it there is uh, two more ways to implement this so let me show you that okay so in this case instead of a random function we are using ti variable that uh, is automatically incremented inside the system and we are simply calculating modulo out of it and in this example we have a frequency of 103 so let me add this so at the moment frequency is one of out of three let's list it but we can change it so let's say that we want one of the ten times like we had in previous example and let me change here now again we are doing 100 um, operations so let's try to do that and as you can see we generated 89% um, of the time that variable um, b was not zero and 11 time was zero or false so exactly how we set it up let's do it again again see very accurate now let's try to change it so let's say every every fifth time one of the five 
so that should be around 20 percent yeah this is also very useful um, to use in the game because this variable di already exists increment incremented by the system we don't have to worry about that and this is very elegant way how that we can use it to generate certain probability to generate certain frequency of events okay and the third method is this and what we are actually doing here is we are using the SID chip to generate a pulse signal with certain frequency and uh, with certain uh, duty cycle We're using channel number three where we can actually read the output of uh, oscillator and we are simply peaking the value from that um, memory address and this variable a can be either zero when the pulse is low or it can be uh, 255 or, or ff in hex when the pulse is high so it's it's simple digital signal and the only thing how we uh, that we need to know here is how to adjust a seed chip so that it generates this signal with a certain frequency and certain uh, duty cycle and I will show you how to do this but first let me uh, show you how this works at the moment this program was set to 10% probability that uh, it's going to generate a high um, value that means 255 so a variable a is going to be 10 percent of the time is going to be high 255 and 90 percent of the time is going to be low or zero so if we repeat this yeah pretty accurate And this little bit of variation is not because of the SID chip, it's because of the basic program. <laughs> so let me explain how to set up this frequency, uh, how to set up this um, pulse uh, waveform, and most importantly how to configure the duty cycle, because uh, that is how we uh, divide the probability of events this is how we set up how many times do you want to be low or high yeah so let's do that list one okay so these values here is actually low byte for the frequency and high byte for the frequency so these are registers for um, frequency for third channel uh, SID third channel and what we actually have here is 20 hertz um, frequency configured it's enough speed that basic always get fresh value still slow enough so that we don't keep too many pulse cycles okay and then this poke here poke 54290 with uh, where, where we set value 64 is actually uh, where we defined uh, pulse wave and then what we have here finally is these two pokes and this is where we define um, duty cycle this is low byte of duty cycle and this is high byte now duty cycle is a 12 bit number so it goes from 0 to f f f that's the maximum value uh, in decimal numbers is 4096 Okay, so how do we uh, define this uh, duty cycle? Um, this duty cycle represents 
a percentage of time that this signal is going to be low under single wavelength and the rest of the time is going to be high. So if we set duty cycle to maximum this 4096, um, this signal is going to be low entire time. So what we need to do, let's say for example, that we want to make a frequency um, or probability that is one of the third time that is going to generate high signal or we are, we are going to represent it as uh, 255 and the rest of the time so two thirds is going to be low that means that we need to divide this number by three and now we get this value and now we can remove this, we don't need that. And what we are going to do now is set our duty cycle to be this value multiplied by two. And if we print duty cycle, it's 2730. So this is how, how much um, percentage of the time is going to be low the rest of the time is going to be high and what that actually means that uh, two-thirds is going to be low and one-third of the time is going to be high so how do we write this 2730 number to these two register well for that i have a little bit of additional code here it is okay so our byte is 207 uh, 2730 and this is the formula to calculate high byte and low byte and if i run this little program we have a uh, high byte is 10 and low byte is 170. so if we apply that to our previous program and let me do just just that for our duty cycle the low byte is 170 and the high byte is 10 okay now if we run this there you go works perfectly So those are three types of um, methods that I like to use when I need to generate some, some events in certain frequency. I find the second solution where I use um, TI variable quite easy to implement and very, very nicely uh, to work with. So yeah. Okay, so that's all for today from me and that's all for this year and until next year. Goodbye.